This offline activity is a review of factoring using the difference of squares, and it will introduce what happens when you have a difference or sum of cubes. But let's start with what you already know. Basically, we have a formula that you've been using that says that if you have two perfect squares and they are subtracted, so you have a difference of squares, those can easily be factored into the perfect, the square root plus the square root times the square root minus the square root. So for example, using that formula, if we had x squared minus 36, we could take the square root of the x, which is x, and the square root of 36, which is 6, and put it into our formula, x plus 6, x minus 6. And of course those can be reversed. You could do x minus 6, x plus 6. That's the difference of squares. And one of the things that was important while we were working these out was that sometimes they're disguised. So for instance, when you see this problem, there's two terms, so little bells should go off in your head that this is the difference of squares, maybe, but oh wait, those are not perfect squares, so now I'm stuck. Remember, your first step is always, 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 always take out the greatest common factor. Always look for things to take out, especially when it's only two terms. You don't have another choice. So right now, we need to get that greatest common factor out. Now in this case, 3x squared and 48 both have a 3 in common. So we're going to factor out the 3, because factoring is dividing. We're dividing the 3 out. Here we're going to have x squared minus, and the 48 divided by 3 is 16. Remember, you can use your calculators in this unit. Once we've taken the greatest common factor out, then we could see now we have a perfect square minus a perfect square. So we factor again. x plus 4 x minus 4 because the square root of 16 is 4. This would be the complete factored form of 3x squared minus 48. Now we're going to add a little challenge to this because sometimes we don't have perfect squares, we have perfect cubes. So what we want to do is we want to look at the formulas for the perfect cubes. So let's just write the formulas here and then we'll apply them on the other side. Perfect cubes. Okay, now you have these formulas in a box on your screen when you go back to the assignment. But let's, we'll talk about what it means a little bit. Because you need an easy way to remember them. First of all, if you have a perfect cube, minus a perfect cube, this is actually factored by the cube root minus the cube root times, ignore this now, the square of that number, change the sign, multiply the numbers together, add the square of the last number. Okay, now let's look and see how that differs from cube plus b cubed. The formula for that is the cube root plus the cube root times the square of that first number minus, because you've got to change the sign, the numbers multiplied together plus the last number squared. Now this is important to note. When they are perfect squares and you have a difference, you can factor them. When they are perfect squares, and you have a sum, that is prime. But if you have perfect cubes, you can factor both. So let's look at some examples of some perfect cubes. First, it might help to review a little bit about cubes. In fact, I think just down the side, we're going to put some cubes. Maybe we'll call it decoration. First of all, cubes. What do cubes look like? 
cubes like that, perfect cubes. Um, one cubed is one. Two cubed, what's two cubed? Think about that. Two cubed is two times two times two, which is actually eight. Three cubed is 27. Four cubed is four times four, which is 16, times four, which is 64. And five cubed is 125. So these numbers here are numbers that need to set off little alarm bells in our head when we are working these problems. Always look, cubes, cubes, cubes. If we have a cube, we need to know what to do with it. Okay, so let's start with a simple one so that we can look at the pattern a little bit. Okay, here's x cubed minus 27. Again, here's our 27 right here. It is 3 cubed, little alarm bells going off. Okay, so like we did the square root, the cube root of x cubed is x. Okay, 27's cube root is 3. Now the way that the pattern works down here is in that first little expression, the minus sign is the same as the minus sign in the original. So this comes straight down like that. So that's our first expression. Once you have that first expression, you really want to ignore this part and just look at this to get the rest. Okay. So when we go to get the rest, we square this number, that'll be x squared. We change that sign to become plus. Multiply the middle terms together. There you go. That's this x and that 3. And then add the last number squared, whatever it is. So square the first number, change the sign, multiply the numbers, add the square. That's following our formula, and this is the complete factoring of that perfect cube. Okay, let's look at another one. Um, let's look at one where you might have to do another step. y plus, really, 16y. Now, that particular problem we're trying to factor has only two terms, so we immediately need to think greatest common factor, because neither term is a perfect cube, nor are they squares. So we want to do the greatest common factor first. So we, we think about that, greatest common factor. Let me see. They both have a 2 in them, and they both have a y. So we're going to divide out those two items and put them out here and see what we have left. So the 2 and the y leave us with x cubed. Here we are left with plus 8. Now we have a cube plus a cube. So we copy the 2y down because we don't want that to go away. That was part of the original problem and we're just trying to factor it, not make things go away. And then we're going to have two more factors. The first one is the cube root of x cubed, which is x. Copy the sign down, which is plus. Take the cube root of 8, which is 2. And then don't look at that problem anymore. Just look at what you have here. Square the first term. Change that sign to minus. Multiply the two terms together and then square the last term, which is 4. Once you've done that, you have a completely factored expression. Now, you have some problems to try on your own. I would encourage you to really make sure that you take out that greatest common factor first. Sometimes that's what causes problems for the students. If you have any questions at all, make sure you ask a tutor or an instructor for help.